Cisco Morris always knows how to add the perfect pop of color to any yard or garden. So here to tell us how to grow crepe myrtles is the gardening guru himself. Please welcome Cisco Morris. Where are you, Cisco? I can't see you. <laughs> oh, yay! I told you to prance out, and you did it. I love it. So these are crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle. I've heard the name. I've never seen them before. They are very crepey and delicate. They Is that are crepey and delicate, the and name? they're one of the most popular trees down south. Oh, okay. So this is a tree. This is a tree, although some only grow like four or five feet tall. Okay. Because you know the two things you notice when you're walking in Seattle these days? You're noticing that there are way too many really big trees in small gardens. Oh. So it happens a lot. You you see that beautiful little tree in the nursery you planted. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It ends up a 40-foot tree. It's covering your whole roof. So these trees don't get very big. Okay. The so other that's... thing you see are trees wilting because this is our second year of yeah, drought. And yeah. they've got powdery mildew. They're wilting. These are very drought tolerant. So is this so. the season to plant or is this the season when they're going to be poofing up and flowering? Well, well it's both. Oh, okay, good. So they're in the, that's one of the things I love about crepe myrtle. What's not to love about crepe myrtle, <laughs> oh, really? That's so what cool. I've always said. In, in down south, they bloom in July. Okay, Here, so like in California, you mean? Oh, oh, no, more like uh, uh, Alabama, oh, and okay, Tennessee, okay, okay. And deep south, North Carolina. Okay. So. Uh, but here, they bloom this year. They're actually blooming early. They often bloom in October when okay. nothing's happening. That's what I was going to say. So is this the ideal plant then to have around? Because it's like everything is, you know, turning brown and the trees and the leaves are falling off. Yeah. So this will brighten up so your yard. So this will brighten up your garden like crazy. And you know what's interesting? A lot of them have this beautiful exfoliating bark. Mm -hmm. When you say exfoliating, do you mean like for your own skin? Like is this something yeah, you want to do? No, that's exactly. Okay, because I'm... <laughs> Exfoliating right now, but uh, but almost the same. The the bark just peels off and yeah, it yeah, becomes yeah. shinier and shinier. And uh, this was as big a branch as I could cut off this tree. But uh, if you had one this wide, it's just so gorgeous you can't yeah, believe yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And then fall color to die for. So beautiful. Oh, it's so Is this beautiful. A shade or a sun? Where would you put this in your yard? This has to have the sunniest spot you have. It okay. cannot take shade. You can grow it in shade, but you'll never ever see it bloom, ever. Yeah, and, yeah, it, yeah. and it might not do very well. So if you put them out in really great sunshine, then they tend to bloom really well. They do great. This is my new favorite right here. Oh, wow. It's like a really dark so plum. So this one's called Moonlight Magic. Yes. And there's also Midnight Magic. Midnight Magic has pink flowers. Moonlight Magic has white flowers. Yeah, so the and contrast with the really dark leaves yeah, and the white these flowers. Yeah, stay like this all summer oh, long. Wow, so beautiful. It is deciduous. They'll fall off in the mm -hmm. winter. But yeah, but the only problem, I've had this in my garden for five years. I have yet to no see flowers. <laughs> Maybe maybe there's some magic to the magic. Have you tried singing to it? Uh, no, I haven't tried that. Oh, I think that's have what you, you need to do. Sing? No, I would love this. to hear it. That yeah. will kill this. Okay, I so can. we're not going to turn this into a singing segment right now. Yeah. I want to ask you a question that doesn't have to do with crepe myrtle because okay. I was actually thinking about you this weekend and I was thinking about can you go anywhere without people just barraging you with plant questions? No. Nope. Because you must have a lot of patience. <laughs> like what? I mean, is this just your personality that you you're cool with just being oh, anywhere in the it. world and people asking you plant questions? Oh, I love to live yeah. to tweet a lot of. I love when people <laughs> go up and say, I love your shows. Or And then, like the other day, one in the morning, I was coming back from a party, and I stopped at the store. Yeah. And I walk in, and this old guy looks at me and goes, you murdered my plant. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I almost fell on the ground laughing, you know. So, Did you have to buy oh, a yeah, late night Snickers bar? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so somebody who is not a gardener, who doesn't have a green thumb, how hard are these to keep alive? Is this something that uh, a newbie to gardening could handle? This is something a newbie should do. Okay. And, you know, planting plants in fall, then what they do, we get all that rain, so yeah. they grow great roots, get a deep root system. Yeah. Then in spring, they grow some more. So when the drought comes, they are ready to take it. So this is the perfect time to plant. Okay. So, and these are some of the easiest. Because now, if you plant, this one is Sioux, and it's like named after the American uh, natives. This one can get 20 feet tall. Oh, wow. So you want to be careful which okay. one you get. 
But uh, this one, I swiped this out of my wife's garden this morning, yeah. so nobody tell, you know. <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> and uh, so, I asked her what the name of this is, and she said it's uh, Crepe Myrtle Misterosa because it's a mystery. She has no idea I was what say, it that is. It sounds like she made that up. <laughs> but this only gets 12 feet, so you yeah. can plant that, and it'll never get too big, and it'll just be every year it'll bloom as long as you give it full sun. And a little bit of well-drained soil, can't okay. go with clay. So you have all these beautiful clippings here. Is this something that you do at home? Is this a tree that you would do a clipping and put in a vase well, in your you house? Know, it's amazing. These make great cut flowers. Yeah, I cut beautiful. this a couple of days ago, and oh, look wow. at how great it looks. So they really last a long time, which I didn't know. Yeah. So you could use this in a bouquet, and it'll last for quite a while, and it's really wonderful. One last thing I wanted to tell people, too, you know, too often what people do is they prune the living tweedle out of them. Yeah. So they just go through, they want to lower Whoa, it. Whoa, Cisco, whoa! <laughs> Some pent up so, anger. So you don't want to do that. If okay. you are going to cut it back, you want to cut to where there's a branch. Oh, okay. It's got to go to a branch. Don't and just go all willy nilly. It's good to thin them out. It's not good to whack the living tweedle out of the <laughs> poor guys. That does them in. <laughs> well, I'm glad that this isn't my yard because you've made a complete mess here, Cisco. I, have, well, I know the janitor here hates me. Okay, well, thanks for being on the show. I'm going to give you a hug. It's so oh, nice la, la. to see you. So Thank you so much. You. This was too fun. After the break, how you can find great deals on a warm and sunny getaway during tropical days at AAA. We'll be back in a minute.